Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, super excited. Today is the final weekday of June. I cannot believe how fast this month has gone. I have a really cool guest today as well. N- uh, Natalia Paruz. I just love saying that name. She is the Saw Lady. Now, many people are going to probably think, what in the world does that mean? She plays a saw as an instrument. Hmm. So like a wood saw that you'd use to cut a piece of wood. Okay. She plays that as an instrument with like a violin bow, ooh, like slides oh, it back and forth. I've seen that before. And she's got a couple of different movies that she's been, uh, her movies, her music has been featured in. Going to play some of that, but it's just really, really cool. And, and the, I just love the... The sound of it is like eerie. It'd be really good for like a scary movie because it's such a bizarre sound. Anyway, I'm going to play a little snippet of what it sounds like during the interview so you'll get a chance to hear it because I think you almost have to hear it to understand. But Natalia Peruz coming up later in the show. Ronald Reagan is my quote for today. He says, the greatest leader is not necessarily the one who does the greatest things. He is the one that gets the people to do the greatest things. I love that. That is a great quote. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. If you're a business owner trying to do your own website, maybe it's time to get help. Or if you don't even have a website, it's definitely time for help. It's 2018. This internet thing is here to stay. At 49bydesign.com, we offer a simple plan to get you online for just $49 a month with no setup fee. This includes a website with the hosting and domain name included in the price. We have larger packages available, but this will get you online so people can find you in 2018. We're affordable by design at 49bydesign.com. That's 49bydesign.com. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Uh, I thought you'd never ask. It is Friday, the 29th day of June. It is National Almond Butter Crunch Day. Oh, hey, I think we need to celebrate that one. Sounds yummy. Uh, National Camera Day and National Waffle Iron Day. I have a waffle iron. You do. Because... <laughs> I saw on on Facebook or somewhere on the internet that you could make brownies in a waffle iron. And I was like, that sounds really good. So at about 11 o'clock on a Sunday night. (laughs) Yes. You and our son and our other son. We had a house guest that was staying with us. We we went to Walmart late at night and bought a waffle iron and some brownie mix. (laughs) And the lady there was like, you have to let me know how that turns out. It turned out really good. Um, I think that's the last time I used it. That was the only time you used it. No, no. I used it to make hash browns once as well. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. I saw that online. I was like, oh, hey. I always burn hash browns when I try to cook them. And I've used it to make cinnamon rolls. Oh, see, there you go. Waffle Iron Day. Celebrate. Not, <laughs> not just for waffles anymore. <laughs> Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Are you tired of high cable TV rates? Sign up for Dish today and get a $500 bonus offer while supplies last. Plus, lock in your price for two years guaranteed. Call All-American Dish, your dish authorized retailer now. 800-818-3967. 800-818-3967. That's 800-818-3967. Offers require credit qualification, 24-month commitment, early termination fee, and e-auto pay. Restrictions apply. Call for details. John and Heidi. Coming up, we've got your brain on drugs, but first, a Chicago Police Department dog sniffed and sniffed and discovered a stash of marijuana worth $10 million. That's quite the deal. That's very cool. Where did so, you find that? Oh, I don't know. Probably during a, a drug you raid. You don't have that part of the story. Mm. Oh. No. I, is that important? <laughs> it was in Chicago. Okay. I, know that, I know that much. And it was at, uh, you know, somewhere that the dog could smell Those it. Those dogs are pretty freaking they cool. They are. I, I think that's really neat. Here's a funny thing about our dogs. We've got two little dogs that they would not be good at uh, any, any kind of job where they have to sniff things out. I threw a treat on the floor the other day. It literally landed about five inches from our dog's face, and she stood there and stared at me like, you're going to throw me a treat or not? They wouldn't be good at any kind of job, period. Our dogs she are see pretty it. much worthless. She couldn't smell it. I had to go over and like <laughs> slide it right to her face, and she looks down and is like, oh, that? That little tiny thing? I thought I was going to get a treat. All right. For those of you who have dogs who understand the word treat, I'm sorry for riling them up. <laughs> good boy. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. This time of year, there are many parties, weddings, cookouts, and other events that often include alcohol. If you're drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. 
The Addiction Hope and Helpline wants to help. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, there's a toll-free number you can call, 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline, 1-800-438-0380, 1-800-438-0380. And, and this is Your Brain on Drugs. A Florida man is in jail after authorities said he threw a samurai sword at deputies that responded to a domestic disturbance call. Oh. Never a good plan. Who has Never samurai ever. swords I don't in their know. home? Uh, deputies responded to a 911 call Wednesday when a woman said her son was threatening her with a pair of swords. And it says uh, deputies <laughs> arrived. 24-year-old Jeffrey Crane was holding the samurai swords and refused to put them down. They said then he threw one of the swords at the deputies. A stun gun was then used to subdue Crane. Yeah, not a good idea. He had a blood alcohol content of point three six. The legal, legal limit Whoa. is point zero eight. So he was yeah. way drunk. He was really, really, really drunk. He faces several charges, including domestic abuse, aggravated assault on a law enforcement officer as well. So, yikes! Bad idea. Uh, don't don't do that. And if you if you feel like you need to have swords around the house, then don't drink with the swords. It's just a bad idea. Just like if you have guns around the house, don't drink if you're going to be playing with your guns. Bad idea. Nothing good is ever going to come of that. Coming up, we've got more fun stuff to get to. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Now, big screen, little screen, thanks for listening on a Friday. For those of you who watch Bachelorette and you've not yet seen the episode from this week, uh, spoiler alert, so I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to rethink your life if you watch The Bachelorette. Just kidding. I'm going to give you... <laughs> I don't watch it. I don't I'm watch gonna, it either. I'm going to just give you a couple of seconds to like plug your ears for just a second here. I don't know if this is going to be like a major shock to anybody, but Bachelorette contestant Lincoln Adam... I don't know who that is. Somebody that's on there. Shocked viewers by declaring that he believes the earth is flat. That was on Tuesday night's episode. So he's one of the flat earthers. I didn't think that was a real thing. I thought that oh, was... Oh, it's a real thing. I thought it was a parody. Is it really? Do There, there are, are really people who believe that if, it is Hey, flat. if you're one of those, that's cool. Nothing against what your beliefs are because, you know, I, it's not like I'm going to prove it, but... I remember watching a guy, this isn't NASA, you know, there are people, oh yeah, there's NASA people, they can trick, they can trick us. There's a guy and his son who did a project for a class project, and they took a balloon and an iPhone or some sort of video camera, and this big, big balloon, and they launched it into space. And you could see it got all the way up to like the atmosphere, and then the pressure changed, popped the balloon, and then it fell to the ground, and they had GPS so they could go get it and get the video footage. Remember that? Like four years uh, ago? Not really. How would they have faked that? I mean, it showed that the world was round. You could see the curvature of the earth all the way around. People so. are insane. Well, no. If that's their beliefs, they they can believe what they want to believe. I just well, thought... they can believe it. It doesn't make right. them any less insane. <laughs> would you just... Uh, <laughs> her name is Heidi. H-E-I-D-I. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I just want you to get the spelling right on that note. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go. And pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at low-cost airlines. 800-719-5601. 800-719-5601. That's 800-719-5601. Now, your scoop of the day, brought to you by 80sinthesand.com. The Border Patrol is cracking down on Canadian joggers. This is this sounds like a joke, but it's a true story. A woman from France was visiting Canada, and she was out on a jog on a beach, and she ran from Canada onto a Washington State beach, and she got nabbed by the Border Patrol. Here's the thing that's interesting. She was detained for two weeks. She's French, visiting her mother in Canada, and she went jogging and ran into a different country, and she was detained for two weeks. I wonder what they thought she was up to. Or you if never she know. Was up, well, if she was up to something. I have no idea. I just think it's a bizarre And there story. has to be signs, no, I, I would assume. You would think I mean, so. she wouldn't have accidentally done it. So, Like, you'd literally draw a line in the sand, but that would get washed away. So I don't know. <laughs> bad idea. Russian man was busted for stealing a bridge. What the what? He dragged away <laughs> with a farm tractor. An entire metal bridge. He tried to sell it for scrap metal. <laughs> they they caught him because there were pieces of the bridge that broke off 
And he left a giant trail of little metal straps <laughs> all the way, all the to, way his to his house. All the way to his house. Yeah. So he hooked on to a, a bridge. In his defense, he was saying, well, they don't use the bridge that much. Well, so what? You it's don't, not yours. You don't just drag, a, no. drag it away with a tractor. <laughs> Although I, I would love to see video of him dragging that down the road. Uh, now let's head to Finland, where a man there pressed all the wrong buttons, and he accidentally called his wife while he was having an affair in the oh, back seat of his car. Oh, my. Yeah. He was in, in in the back of his car and having a uh, impassioned moment with his wife's friend. Oh, and when the call boy. went through, that's when the mistress said, "I love you," and the wife recognized her friend's voice, and she went to the friend's house with an axe. Oh my! That happened in Finland. Gosh! Now it doesn't say if she chopped the house up or the the wife's friend oh, up. Oh, it would have been. I would have. That it would have been ugly. Be, that's a terrible, terrible. Don't cheat. I mean, there's no excuse to do that. None whatsoever. Instagram claims the company is now worth over one hundred billion dollars. Instagram. I still don't understand Instagram. Me either. And it's purchased now by Facebook, right? They own it. I have no they, idea. I'm sure they do because they they automatically set up an account for us. So we have Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Now we have Instagram.com slash John and Heidi Show. I have no idea. I don't even follow myself on there because I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. But we're there if you want to see. There's things that get posted there once in a while. I still don't understand why. And there's all these different filters. I don't get that either. So you can go on and change the looks of the photo and make them look uh, like they're old-timey photos and stuff. Whatever. I don't know. I don't mess with it. I just don't get it. But I don't know. I'm old. A survey by the Edelman Public Relations Group found that 50% of Americans have deleted at least one social media app in the past year. Have you deleted any apps recently, Heidi? And then reloaded it and then deleted it again and yes. then reloaded it? <laughs> yes. She is addicted to Candy Crush. What level are you on today? Do you know? 2,342 or something like that. I think that's... It is fascinating to me how much time you put into that. You are amazing at it, by the way. There's <laughs> there's literally a whole room of nerds at the Candy Crush <laughs> World Headquarters that are trying to stay two levels ahead of Heidi Small. They're like, oh, no, she passed. <laughs> I thought you said it was unpassable. Yeah, it was. I'm not sure how she passed it. Are there people on higher levels than you? Oh, you know? yeah. Are there? Yes. What, what levels are they on? Lots of people right here in our town, actually, that are way are ahead of me. Really? I can see their little icons, and I'm trying oh, to catch goodness. them, and they're... You guys all need to get a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Once again, I am old. I don't get it. So anyway, they say 50% of Americans have deleted at least one app in the last year. Heidi has deleted one app about 17 times. <laughs> she'll delete it because she's like, I got a problem. Then she'll reload it while she's waiting in the car for me. <laughs> And our final story, a study from the Bureau of Economic Analysis found that over $300 billion have been re repatriated into the United States since the tax reform was passed. So repatriated is a fun word to say. That is a fun word to say. Repatriated. All right. Thanks that's for listening. That's awesome, by the way. I it love is. That. $300 billion. That's yeah. nothing to laugh at. You could buy three uh, Instagrams for that. Or t or two Apple products. <laughs> <Which you just stop>. <laughs> <laughs> this has been today's Scoop of the Day. Do you have ideas for t-shirt designs, but you don't have a clue how to print them? Or maybe you'd like to have t-shirts and coffee mugs available to buy online with your business logo printed on them. There's a website that makes it easy. We set ours up in about 10 minutes. There's no sign-up fee, no minimum orders, no monthly fees. It's just a really easy way to put some cool items online for sale, and you get paid every time somebody buys them. You don't have to print or ship anything. Just sign up, upload your designs, and then let people know where they can get your cool stuff. More details available at Radiosavings.com. That's Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. I'm super excited to visit with Natalia Paruz. She is the Saw Lady, and I've got her on the line right now. Natalia, how are you today? Great. Thank you for having me on the show, John. I could just say your name all day because I think you've got a beautiful name, Natalia Paruz. Thank That's, you. What a beautiful name. Now, uh, you also do some really beautiful music, and you've been featured in a lot of different movies. Now, one of the things that people need to realize is Richard Gere was pretending to play a saw in a movie, but when he was pretending, you were the one that was really actually making that music, weren't you? Uh, yeah, but actually, uh, you're confusing two movies um, together. Uh, Richard Gere, that's a different movie. That's Time Out of Mind. Okay. Um, and there I just played on the soundtrack. The, the movie that you're thinking of is Another Earth. Oh. Uh, it, yeah, in which um, there's an actor, uh, William Maypother, who play, you know, quote unquote plays the saw on screen, but actually what you're hearing is my playing. And I coached him to mime saw playing so that it looks realistic. 
Nice. Very good. Well, we're going to play a little bit of that so people can hear what it sounds like, because this is like a regular saw that people would use to cut wood, correct? Exactly. Yes. If is, you is have it, a saw in your toolbox, you you have a musical instrument. So you don't have to go and buy a saw from like the, the musical saw store. You buy this from a hardware store. Correct. All right. And I'm going to play a little bit of it so people can hear what we're talking about, because I think they almost need to hear this to understand. And I'm going to play a little here. So that is music that's coming from a regular wood saw, and it's from Natalia Peruz, the saw lady, that's playing that. How long did it take you to learn how to play the saw? Well, um, I've been playing for more than 20 years now. To learn just to make sounds, it takes seconds, but to learn to be precise on the notes, that's an ongoing thing. Because, you know, you don't have an indication of where the notes are on the blade, and there's no point of marking it, let's say, with a marker, because it keeps changing as as the saw, like, moves ever so slightly between your knees when you're holding it, when you're playing. So it's just you have to develop a technique and have a really good ear. Natalia, are there a lot of people who play the saw, or is this a pretty unique thing? Uh, it's a growing art form these days. Um, you know, um, I run the uh, New York City Musical Saw Festival, and when I started 12 years ago, there were only five saw players, and last time we had 60. So it's definitely a growing art form. Well, that is amazing to, to see that kind of growth in just that short amount of time. Now, when when there's a movie like the, the movie Another Earth where there's actual saw playing on screen, and again, the actor that's doing it is pretending to do it, but you're actually playing the saw. Um, when that movie came out, was there kind of an increase interest in saw playing at that point? Totally, yes. That movie was really amazing for the art form. Um, a lot of uh, particularly young people got into it, and uh, yeah, it's been really great. And how? what an honor that had to be for you to be the one that they selected and said, hey, Natalia, we want you to play the saw for this movie. Yeah. How did they select you, and how did they find you? Of all the people that do this, how did they find you? Believe it or not, um, the director... Um, happened to be walking in the New York City subway when I was playing. It was at the Union Square subway station. Um, I play in the subway three times a week with uh, music under New York. And uh, he saw me, and he actually did not have musical saw in mind for the movie before seeing me. When he saw me play, he was like, oh, my God, I want this in my movie. And so then he went and wrote uh, the scene particularly with me in mind for, for his movie. How cool is that? Again, visiting right now with Natalia Peruz, and she is the saw lady, and she plays a saw. It's like a wooden saw or a metal saw that you'd use to cut wood, and she plays that. Now, uh, it, how long has this art form been around? Do you know who started doing this? Well, it's been around for 300 years, believe it or not, but in the past 100 years or so, it nearly died out. Uh, there's no one country of origin. Basically, wherever there were woodcutters, lumberjacks, they discovered that they could make sounds with their tools without one knowing of the other. So there's, there's people from every country in the world probably who think that they invented it, but actually it's, you know, just like the violin. Who invented violin playing? We yeah. don't really know. Well, I, I don't know who invented it, but you have sure perfected it. So, Natalia, thank you for doing what you're doing. It's a really, I think it's an amazing art form, and thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, Natalia Peruz, and she is known as The Saw Lady, and I'm going to throw a link to these uh, YouTube videos that have some of her work. There's one from the movie Time Out of Mind with Richard Gere, and there's another here uh, where you actually hear her playing while you see an actor playing on screen, and that one is from Another Earth. I've got a link to those in our show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. If you're a business owner, you should consider using radio. Radio is a powerful tool. Over 90% of us listen to the radio each week. Imagine if this ad was talking about your business, helping you hit your goals. We can help. We can also create a fun jingle, too, to get people singing your song. When you put words to music, they're nine times more memorable, and that makes radio work even better. Learn more at RadioReallyWorks.com. Radio jingles to help you get better results with the money you're already spending. RadioReallyWorks.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The world's biggest island is, do you know? I do. Greenland. Oh. Yeah, it's the world's biggest island, Greenland. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Amazon is the world's longest river. The long, w- longest river in the world, the Amazon. And our final fun fact for you, What's Heidi. What's that, John? What do you think is the largest ocean? I don't know. Could you be more Pacific? 
<laughs> is it the Pacific it Ocean? It is the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Don't quite know. What, was that funny or was that just stupid? <laughs> I thought it was. Pre- I thought it was pretty funny, but yeah, you, know, no, you, you cracked yourself my, up. It's one of my dad jokes. <laughs> I'm going to take my dad joke and sit in the corner now. <laughs> Thanks for listening to a couple of fun facts, courtesy of LearnWithoutLoans.com. If you're a business owner trying to do your own website, maybe it's time to get help. Or if you don't even have a website, it's definitely time for help. It's 2018. This internet thing is here to stay. At 49bydesign.com, we offer a simple plan to get you online for just $49 a month with no setup fee. This includes a website with the hosting and domain name included in the price. We have larger packages available, but this will get you online so people can find you in 2018. We're affordable by design at 49bydesign.com. That's 49bydesign.com. John and Heidi. Time now for the grandiloquent word of the day, and the word today is phlegmatic. Phlegmatic. Do you know what phlegmatic means? I do not. It is an adjective. It is a person having an unmo- unemotionally and stoically calm disposition, not easily excited to action or display of emotion, apathetic or sluggish, having or shown a slow and stoid temperament resembling consistent of or producing the humor phlegm so phlegmatic is the word <laughs> so if you don't get if you're not really excitable i mean you're just kind of a eh, whatever ho hum that's neat mm. whatever uh if you're not laughing at any of the stuff we do you might be phlegmatic <laughs> either that or you have a really good sense of humor and you don't fall for my silly dad jokes phlegmatic in a sentence it says spock's phlegmatic demeanor was necessary to balance out the outlandish persona of the perpetually Exeniobius Captain Kirk. Yeah, this is ridiculous. I don't know any of those other words, so we're going to just stick with the one that is the grandiloquent word today, and that word is phlegmatic. John and Heidi. Now you can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go and pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at Low Cost Airlines. 800 719 5601. 800 719 5601. That's 800 719 5601. Now, some weird news for you. On a Friday, a chain thief who dropped his pants and pretended he was defecating found himself in big trouble after he was arrested and charged with larceny from the person. A judge in Kingston and St. Andrew's Parish Court, uh, which is located in Jamaica, heard Marlon McKenzie saw the victim who was seated in a car wearing a gold chain. He decided to steal it. That's when he walked up to the car, grabbed the chain from the victim's neck, and ran. The victim alerted police about what had transpired, and they gave chase. The chain grabber, trying to elude the police and his victim, went to an area and pretended that he was defecating. He was held by the police and charged. I don't understand why he thought that was going to (laughs) work. Maybe he thought they'd just run right on by if somebody was in the middle of a job like that. He gets to go back to court on July the 13th. It's a Friday, so Friday the 13th for a sentencing. I think hmm. that's important that they throw that Friday the 13th in there. Probably not going to have a lot of I didn't of know we had day. a Friday the 13th yeah, it's next coming month. up next month. Month of July. Let me look Yay! at my calendar to make sure that's correct. I like Friday the 13th. I know. That's Heidi's. She, I don't really believe in luck, but she we says that's her lucky day. We should have a Friday the 13th party. We should, yes. <laughs> I'm going to let you plan that. She'll forget about it. <laughs> Thanks for listening to a little bit of weird news on the John and Heidi Show. Now, your moment of duh. Union, South Carolina man charged with malicious damage to property after throwing a toilet seat at his ex-wife's home. Oh, okay. According to an incident report, 60-year-old, 60-year-old, you'd think you know better at that age, 60-year-old Jerry Ray Benton went to his ex-wife's home Sunday and tossed a toilet seat at the house. The toilet seat bounced off the window of the back door and then hit the driver's side door of his ex-wife's Toyota Camry scratching the paint officers reportedly saw the toilet seat on the ground by the car when they arrived the victim told police benton had been harassing her for a month the victim's boyfriend said benton also dumped trash all over the yard another time he faces up to 30 days in jail and a two thousand fine two thousand dollar fine or both so he could end up with both here's the thing she's moved on you need to move on i know you're probably sad that you know she's your ex-wife and not still your wife but if you're throwing toilet seats at her maybe there's a reason that she's your ex-wife. exactly that's not a good thing you want to win her back up. 
Come on, Jerry. You want to win her back? That's not how you do it. You don't throw toilet seats. Have you ever heard of a story where somebody won their sweetheart back by tossing a toilet no. seat at their car? No. Or their house? No. It's never happened. You're not going to read that fairy tale because it doesn't end well. So instead of tossing a toilet seat at her, maybe you toss some kind words her way. That'd be a good thing to do. <laughs> there you go. This has been some... No, it wasn't weird news. That could have been. It was your moment of duh. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This time of year, there are many parties, weddings, cookouts, and other events that often include alcohol. If you're drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. The Addiction Hope and Helpline wants to help. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, there's a toll-free number you can call, 1-800-438-0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline, 1-800-438-0380. It's time now for Fake News or Florida. You ready for this, Heidi? I am ready. Here's what we do for those of you that are new. Uh, each day at this time, I read a story, and Heidi has to tell me if this is something that truly happened in the great state of Florida or if it's all made up, if it's a bunch of flubbery. That's one of our grandiloquent words. Uh, <laughs> I don't flubbery. like that word. You don't like that word? I do not. Really? Should I quit using that word? Yes, please. All right. So, fake news or Florida? Let's see if this is flubbery. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you tell me. Two men were arrested after making homemade bombs to scare a tenant out of their garage. Fake news or Florida? Florida. Yeah, I we think read we that. actually. That's not fair. We read that story. So, uh, how about this one? Fake news or Florida? A man was busted for a DUI and he claimed his cat was driving. Fake news or Florida? Fake news. <laughs> it's <is> fake news. <laughs> That's some funny fake news. I appreciate all the help from his people. His cat's name was Toonsit. I was just thinking of that exactly. <laughs> That was from uh, Saturday, Saturday Night, Night Live, Live back when it was good. I haven't seen it. Honestly, I haven't seen it for like a year. Honestly, so maybe even that wasn't good. I watched oh, one funny. of those Toons' things not too long ago. I was like, wow, that Why was we laugh so this? stupid. This was not funny. <laughs> but I'm still smiling. This has been another episode of Fake News or Florida. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with some good news, and I think we got some darn good news here. It comes your way courtesy of Odiva. If you've never heard of them before, well, listen up. They are the monthly subscription service just for the ladies. All of their details at radiosavings.com. You ready for some good news? Ready. Um, this is another one of the stories uh, where it just kind of makes you feel really good. Because I think it's a neat story. And here's the headline. It says, hundreds of people bring backpacks instead of flowers to a woman's funeral. No, there's a reason. In accordance to a woman's final wishes, there were backpacks lining the pews at her funeral instead of flowers. Tammy Waddell passed away earlier this month at the age of 58 from a prolonged illness. And Northside Hospital, Forsyth, Georgia, is where this happened. But before she died, she asked people to bring backpacks filled with school supplies. Oh, I love that. That's great. She worked as a paraprofessional and a teacher for several schools. And at one point in her 30-year career, she even was recognized as Teacher of the Year. So when she utilized her funeral as a means of giving back to the students one last time, nobody was surprised by this compassionate gesture. Those around her recognized Tammy by her generosity, selflessness, and unconditional love, says her obituary. Though her achievements are accolades are, and accolades are numerous, none are greater than the many lives that she changed over the course of her three decades in education. Her cousin posted a photo of the unique funeral feature to Twitter, and it garnered praise and condolences. She said, My cousin, a teacher, wanted backpacks with supplies brought to her funeral instead of flowers for needy students kind of sounds funny the way it's worded um backpacks for the needy students not flowers <laughs> but either way what he meant to say was that and she said and he said right in oh i guess it was he that said it on twitter he said it's serving others to the very end 
And it is just so cool. When you look at the photo, you see how many people brought backpacks filled with school supplies. I've got a link to the story if you'd like to read it. It's their show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. Stories like that kind of choke me up a little bit because there are some wonderful, awesome, amazing people out there. And sadly, so many times they go under the radar. Nobody ever gets to talk about it. So I'm really glad that somebody shined the spotlight on this. Yeah. Um, and what an amazing life right up till the very end. So very, very cool. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday.